kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I've got plenty of gum. Huh. That's kind of odd. What the fuck? What the fuck is this? Oh! Wall boobs? So right. Are those wall boobs? Are you serious? This is what I get in the Duke Nukem game? What the? Alright, now this is more like it. Alright. Yeah. Shake it, baby. I'm not really sure how to break the news. How do I approach this now legendary game, having been in development for over 12 years? You know, somebody said something funny to me. Imagine waiting 12 years to see a firecracker go off. It wouldn't matter if somebody told you it's a dud, you still want to see it for yourself. That's what this game's like, and there's no way in hell that my review is gonna keep those of you who want to buy the game away from it. Especially Duke fans. You probably already bought it, Balls of Steel edition. But I bet you have a little bit of buyer's remorse. I oughta break a broom handle off in your ass. Duke Forever has had many behind the scenes iterations. Do you remember this one back in 2001? to this game. I want to play this one. After having played our version of Duke Nukem Forever, this one looks a lot less boring. Hell, some of the textures and animations and backgrounds are even better than this version from 2001. And I'd be willing to bet there were more interesting guns and NPCs. And what happened to the Prospector? <laughs> you think them sunglasses make you look cool or something? An enemy variety with the aliens taking over the bodies of EDF soldiers with tentacles everywhere. All that sounds way more interesting. No, instead we get this. Lame jokes about current games, when Duke walks up to a puzzle with a bunch of pipes, he cracks a joke at Valve's expense. I hate Valve puzzles. But then goes on right ahead to do the lame ass puzzle. That's not Duke. Duke would never do that. Duke would say, man, fuck your puzzle. I hate Valve puzzles. I think we all knew that it wouldn't live up to its hype and expectations for a 12 year development hell cycle. But in the end, I think we all secretly hoped that the game would be a little bit better than it ended up. And I don't have any idea of who to put the blame on. Does it go to 3D Realms, Triptych Games, Piranha Games, 2K Games, or Gearbox? So here we go anyway. The game is marred by frame rate issues, long low times every 10 minutes, and very low res textures and backgrounds. And that's even if they load, if they pop in like 15 seconds after you loaded up the game after waiting all that time.
Now granted the graphics might look as you should expect from a game that started, you know, 12 years ago and that have been updated time after time again. Half of them are ugly, really low res, as if they didn't take the time to upgrade those particular textures, yet somehow found time to upgrade others. Now some have defended this game by saying it's a blast from the past. This is the way it's supposed to be. That's just not the case. Why then does it have a two weapon limit from Halo? Instead of the full Duke Arsenal kill anything in any way you want. Or why does it have regenerating health a la Halo? No, this isn't a blast from the past and you have to face the facts. It's a cookie cutter modern FPS with a Duke paint job. A damn good paint job, but ultimately it's hard to look over that your car is a piece of shit. What am I, a chimpanzee? What the hell? No, come on, no! The game wants you to engage in first person linear platforming puzzles. I freaking hate first person platforming. I mean, sometimes they make sense and they can vary the gameplay. The problem here, the physics are downright terrible. It's a chore to do anything. Duke feels like he's floating on a pocket of air. The aiming still feels off after many tweaks in the option menu. And the guns have absolutely no punch to them, except for the badass shotgun. The physics are brought to the forefront even more so when you're interacting with one of the mini games because the whole thing about Duke is that there are several, like, interactive environment bits. But these mini-games are a joke. There's zero effort put into them. Pinball is barely playable. How do you fuck up pinball? I've got balls of fail. If you're gonna include mini-games, then include them! This is 2011! Show us that you care! What the fuck? The reason why these games were simplistic back then, because that was 15 years ago. But today you can act like you give a damn. The basketball hoops like deflect your balls as if they have like a magnet and come back and hit your face. And the air hockey game is so embarrassing, I felt embarrassed just forcing myself to win a game. around with stuff was the icing on the cake in Duke Nukem 3, why does the icing taste like shit in forever? Game over. 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 Oh, that's right, because you literally play with shit. Uh, no, what am I doing? What kind of sick motherfucker picks up wet feces? Poo poo pee pee! Kaka poo poo pee pee! If you're gonna be encouraged to piss on and fuck around with everything to increase your ego, then put more effort into it. Thanks to the aliens, I'll never get that moment back! You fucking amateur! We're done! We're done professionally, man! You're a nice guy! You're a nice guy! But you don't get it! Fuck! Thanks, Duke. <laughs> that guy was a douche. This ego, this regenerating health, regenerating health in Duke Nukem. That means instead of exploring levels for health packs or the most badass weapons, or even the jet pack which is nowhere to be found in single player, you're hiding behind walls, rocks, and pillars half the game. Now what was it that Duke said about power armor? Alright, let's move out. Duke, we've got your green power armor over here and ready to go. Power armor is for pussies. Um, well, okay, uh, you want a gun instead? Isn't his ego meter acting the same way as Master Chief's? Being forced to carry two weapons is probably the biggest complaint in the game and a lot of reviewers have touched on it. Because basically, because you can't kill bosses any other way except for rocket launchers, explosives, you're gonna carry one rocket launcher or explosive weapon 
if you're smart, the entire game leaving one spot open for you. And since all the other ga guns pretty much suck and it's hard to tell if you're hurting them, you're gonna use the shotgun. Why in a game like this are you forcing mechanics like this down our throat? This is Duke, this is not Halo, it doesn't have to be Halo for us to like it. The fun weapons like the freeze ray and the shrink ray are diminished because of this. You're barely gonna use them for a few shots or so. Half of the game though is spent on fantastic, lovely turret sections. You know those sections that we all crave and love, I can't wait to get to the next turret section. Either that or the driving sequences that are extremely well done. I mean, I felt like I was in the middle of a real racing game. Only I checked the fucking box art and it says I'm supposed to be playing fucking Duke Nukem. We apologize for this momentary angry outburst. We realize that vehicle sections and turret sections can be both fun and interesting. Unfortunately, in Duke Nukem Forever, they are the things that you remember the most for being bad rather than being good. Fucking piece of shit. But no, instead I'm fucking around with this kind of stuff for hours instead of being a badass like Duke is. It's padding in the worst kind of way. One thing though, that the game can lay claim to is that it is varied because of all those different types of sections. And there are some legit fun levels in the game like the Ghost Town Showdown. But for every level like that, there's four or five that feel like padding or worse, disturbing. The Hive in particular is getting a lot of negative attention. Not only are there the creepy wall boobs. So wrong, yet so right. But girls are seemingly being raped, though thankfully only implied. <laughs> I get what they're trying to do here. They're trying to shock the hell out of you. To make you really care what you're fighting for. Those are our babes that those alien motherfuckers are raping. How dare they kill our chicks! Duke, what's happening to us? Looks like you're fucked. Duke, it was our first time fucking with an alien. Duke, we'll get the weight off in like a week, we swear. Duke! Oh God, sick. What the fuck? In a better game, this might have worked, but it just feels tasteless here because it's not backed up by any substance at all. You want to push the envelope, then push it with the hot chicks and Duke. Mm. Ooh. Oh, oh yeah, right there. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh. That was fun. Was it good for you, baby? <laughs> what about the game, Duke? Was it any good? <laughs> yeah, but after 12 fucking years, it should be. I think what blows me away the most is how little was added to the whole Duke mythology. The weapons are mostly the same ones from 1996. The enemies are pretty much all the same and very poorly animated at that. We had several teams working on this game. Teams of really smart people. And this is what they came up with? Why is there no freaking hidden things or rewarding secrets? Unless you count Dead Space or, or the insult to Halo, much better games. Power armor is for pussies. Huh. So that's a pussy thing to do, yet drinking one beer and getting shit-faced, that's not pussy. If you could put up with linear gameplay, a turret section every now and then, vehicle driving, fucking around with things, and relatively not that much shooting, but the whole Duke Nukem experience spitting out his one-liners, though them feeling a lot more lazy this time, then this game might be alright for you. 
and there's a lot of it. The game took me around, you know, 12 to 15 hours to complete, but it leaves on a pretty shitty ending. Even Duke says it is. What kind of shit ending is that? Now, I thought maybe Duke can make up for this barely average game with the multiplayer. But it's no wonder that reviewers for this game don't even touch on multiplayer because it's barely worth mentioning. It's extremely old school in a bad way. There's the deathmatch stuff, Capture the Flag, and King of the Hill. Capture the Flag is the most innovative thing that they can come up with, which is basically Capture the Babe. Now, the floaty movement, the lackluster weapons, and the crappy aiming are all put on really focused display here. They're not even trying to be innovative, and even Capture the Babe is just window dressing. Even slapping that bitch on the ass isn't gratifying when she puts her hand in your face as you're trying to bring her back to your base. My favorite. <laughs> Ooh, how am I gonna explain that handprint? <laughs> Ooh, I guess I've been playing for the wrong team. What else? There's 10 multiplayer maps. Everybody plays as a variation of Duke. And if you use anything but the rocket launcher, you're screwed. If you were to play multiplayer long enough, you earn experience to unlock silly hats and static achievements that you can then go and visit in your digs. Your digs is a sort of virtual cribs mode. All those curves, and me with no brakes. Oh, Monsieur Duke, you have been working so hard. Now get out of those dirty clothes. And you're not safe from glitches even in this game mode. Look at this crazy ass one. I have Emma Frost from X-Men in my dig. Dear Diary, Jackpot. No. Again, something that may have worked in a better game, especially if those mini games were at all fun to replay in your game room. But I'm gonna bet that the multiplayer community for this game is gonna die out pretty quickly. The game just doesn't feel like a $60 experience. Maybe it was stupid to expect more from Duke Nukem after all of the problems that this game had being made and the development cycle, but I at least expected something a little bit more fresh for Duke fans than this cookie cutter, copy paste, modern first person shooter. The final verdict for Duke Nukem Forever is a four out of 10. It's barely average. For Duke, I expected better. And maybe this game would have spanked major babe ass back in the nine, late 90s or 2000s. But by today's standards, it doesn't hold up. They should have thrown everything out and restarted and given Duke the treatment he needed. Which they did do that, but the treatment they gave us, 4 out of 10. Now I heard the PC version is superior, shorter load times, less graphical glitches, better graphics, and that probably would have rated slightly higher. So if you plan to experience this legend of a game, then pick it up on PC. I only hope that Duke gets another shot. Gearbox bought the license looking towards the future, and I hope Randy just moves straight on forward with a full focus development cycle, clever writing, new technology, and everything that makes Duke great. I hate to piss on Duke this way, but unfortunately this outing is hardly worth the time, money, or effort. And ultimately, it needs to be treated the Duke way. <laughs> <laughs>